Hey guys, so I'm doing my makeup and I just remembered something that happened some weeks back and I can't believe I didn't come here and talk to you guys about it because <laughs> it was mind-blowing, okay? So I'm done with my foundation. This is my concealer. So from some weeks back, I saw a post on maybe Insta blog or one of these blogs where a lady was saying that um some girls, I think she was talking about worry girls or something like that. Either worry girls or Delta girls, Asaba girls or something, or just girls in general. She was talking about the fact that some of them go and sell their eggs just for money, just to buy iPhone, just to, you know, carry handbags, some even use it to buy iPad. I don't know why that iPad thing made me laugh because to be honest, I don't know. I don't see the need for an iPad. <laughs> I've never, I've never seen the need for one. When I see people that have iPads and they're touching it, it, it looks good to me. But each time I want to buy one for myself, I'm like, okay, well, what is it that you need an iPad for that your normal phone cannot do? And if you wanted a bigger screen, you already have a laptop. So what do you need it for? So anyway, it's not funny to me that somebody will go and sell their eggs just to buy iPad, right? I mean, I can understand selling your eggs for money sake maybe you need money for education you need money for something you know important and that's the only way you think you can get money now it doesn't mean that i'm actually for it i'm actually against selling any of your body parts just for money i feel like if you want to donate any of your body parts or any of your organs you should donate it out of the goodness of your heart okay it's quite it's not illegal, but it's quite unethical to me, and I think to most people, for you to donate your organs, your whatever, just for the money, right? But do people do it? Yes. Are you going to be arrested for it? No. Um, do people, is it a normal thing to do? Yes, but it's quite unethical to at least me, okay? Anyway, so, but I can understand it if, oh, you need your school fees or you know you're going through really hard times and you need money and you've heard that people are selling you know their eggs and you decided to just sell your own however another thing i'm against in selling especially eggs or sperm or even donating it i'm against doing it anonymously okay i'm against doing it an anonymously and i'll get into why but i'm against doing it anonymously because both both those who donate or sell and those who receive anonymously are against it for obvious reasons actually like if it's not obvious to you at this point then i don't know where to start from in this conversation but for obvious reasons i'm against anonymous donations however i know that it is done i know people do it all the time it's not a new thing anywhere i know it, it it's done all the time in fact selling of organs is not a new thing anywhere like <laughs> you don't even want to know the kind of markets that there is for selling of organs both illegally legally and otherwise like there's a market for it so i'm not i'm not naive or ignorant of that fact right i'm just telling you what i believe anyway so when i saw that post i remember replying that com replying that post and saying me my own issue is something along these lines though i can't remember my exact comment how do you keep track of all your children right especially those doing it anonymously that goes back to what i was trying to say how do you keep track of all your children if you donate your eggs indiscriminately and anonymously, right? That like you just go and just sell your eggs and you don't even care what those eggs are used for or who takes, who gets the eggs and, you know, the outcome of those eggs. You just go and sell it for the sake of money. How do you keep track of your children? So I made that comment there. I was like, because in the future, what you're going to be saying is a lot of people marrying their siblings because this world is large but this world is actually getting smaller it's getting smaller because of technology it's getting smaller because of basically technology anyway but aside the physical barriers that have been reduced by technology you know borders have now been um blurred or what's the word like people can now travel to countries that in in the past people could not think of even traveling to those countries or even if you wanted to travel to those countries you'll be on the seas for days and nights right so all those things now 
I don't even think the farthest place in this on this earth from Nigeria from the UK. I don't think the farthest place will take you more than two days to get to. Like the farthest, the end of the earth, Antarctica, wherever Australia, wherever you want to call it. I don't think it will take you more than two days flight. I mean, twenty four hours or even forty eight hours flight, like different flights. I don't think it will take you more than that to get there. But in in those days where where they had just sea transportation as the only way of going further. It will take you 40 days and 40 nights, <laughs> basically, you know, to get to such destination. So, all those things have now been reduced. And then social media, um, internet, people can now find themselves anywhere. People are now dating interculturally and intercontinentally. It's not even, it's not impossible for you to meet your sibling and fall in love with your sibling. Because I've heard of this thing that happens where sometimes when you meet your sibling and you don't know right you don't know this person is your sibling or even your cousin or you're related right and you don't know there's an attraction between two of you that you confuse for sexual attraction right you just know that there's something about this person that draws you to them but because you don't know about the bloodline or the you know uh, uh, siblingship or the relationship you you interpret that interaction as you know, love or, or something sexual basically i mean not deliberately not deliberately okay the deliberate one that one is a mental problem for a different day but i'm talking about not deliberately meeting somebody who you are related to maybe not even a direct sibling maybe a cousin or a half sibling you meet that kind of person and then you fall in love with the person right so my question was and is how do you stop it basically because you can't tell that that person is your child, okay? So I made that comment and hey, you guys, you shock me, no be small. I'm sure some of you know what I'm talking about because some people, some of you, I saw some of you in the comment section, you know, replying and also as shocked as I was. So I dropped this comment though. I went about my day, you know, as usual. Next thing I came back to see my mentions being blown up with people responding to my comments. I don't know where all these people came from. Who Hmm. Social media. I don't know where all these people came from. Oh, started talking about how I'm so dumb, how I don't have sense, how how can I say those are children? Hey, God, dude. That how can I say those are children? That egg that just goes that ah that should go and educate myself. That egg that just goes every month is what I'm calling children. Children call children me. You know. Like, and then we are serious. It's not a joke. Oh. This is, we're not joking. I even saw some other comments, like not not replies to me, now just random comments saying the same thing. Like, ah, what's, what's there in selling your eggs? After all, every month is just wasting your period. What's there in selling your eggs? And I was dumbfounded, you guys. I think I was more shocked at the fact that people legit, because it's one thing to joke about it, like, oh, egg, I just waste every day, right? It's one thing to do that, and it's another thing to actually believe that those your eggs are actually just eggs. They are not children, okay? By the way, yes, I understand that the woman's egg, okay, that, that gets released every cycle, on its own is just an egg. It's not a human being. I understand that. That is basic biology, okay? Women girls are born with a finite number of eggs, right? And those finite number of eggs get de de diminished or depleted. De is it depleted? Depleted. <laughs> depleted. <laughs> get depleted over time. That's why women have something called biological clock because the woman's eggs get depleted, diminished or whatever over time, right? So I totally, totally get that, right? So there was a part where the woman was saying, the girl was saying, oh, why are you selling your eggs when you don't know what will happen in the future? That her talk doesn't really make sense, though, because you can actually sell your eggs and still have enough eggs to reproduce your own kids when you are ready, right? Except you have other underlying issues which might become worse when you get those injections that are used to induce you to produce eggs that they can now extract and go and, you know, use for whatever they want to use it for, right? So... Um, ordinarily, it shouldn't be a problem for a woman to donate her eggs and still be able to have her children when she's ready. Ordinarily, okay, all things being equal. But I think I even mentioned it there that 
You people trust your doctors too much, you, especially doctors who are cutting corners like that, who are going through backyard like that to buy eggs. You trust them too much with what they are injecting you. You don't know whether they are injecting you something that will hyper, hyper stimulate your ovaries to a point where you now start having other complications, okay? Because there's something called hyperstimulation of ovaries, okay? I don't even know where I know all these things from. These are just, these are just random information that I just gather in my head for no reason, <laughs> okay? So women actually have issues when their ovaries are hyperstimulated, right? So it's not as easy as some people try to make it sound. It's not as black and white as some people try to make it sound, right? These things can actually have health implications for these women however all things being equal women can actually donate their eggs and still be fine okay um so yes i understand that in isolated cases an egg is not a child but my dear brothers and sisters what exactly do people think that they sell their eggs for or they donate their eggs for i don't understand what do they think is the end product do they think that these eggs are being sold to use and make omelets or what like I don't get it. Some people are saying, ah, something I waste every month. What's the what's there? Some people even replied me oh, with laughing emojis, self, like I was like I was being very stupid. And I was like, hey? See the people that we are sharing society with though. I remember saying that <laughs> replying somebody that thing. You will see people walking on the road and you will think that these people are normal people. They will dress well, look good, and you think, oh, this is just a, a regular human being like me. You will know that this person, <laughs> this person is dangerous to the society. Because how can you say that? Like, like you know, go school. I don't even think you even need to go to school, sir, for this thing to be intuitive to an extent. Because if you know that it is, at least you know that it is egg and sperm that, that you know, forms a child, right? Right? We do know that, right? You know that it is egg and sperm that forms a child. So why are you saying that a woman's egg does not equal her child when she's donating it, donating it or selling it to fertility clinics? How can grown people, how can grown, because I mean for you to use social media, you're a grown person. How can grown people not know that those eggs that they're selling actually are their children when fertilized? They are your children once they are fertilized. What makes you the maternal link in that child? <laughs> it's not whether you carry the child or not. It is because it is your DNA that's in form of your egg that's formed that child, right? So it's your DNA and another man's DNA, which is the sperm. That's the only way a man can contribute to the um to the formation of a of a human being. It's his sperm. The only way you can contribute to the formation of a human being is your egg. The vessel is not what makes what makes uh, um, what makes that child yours, right? So I mean, the child can be yours in social sense, but I mean in the real biological sense of the word, what makes that child your child is because of your egg. That's why people can donate their eggs or not donate. People can do IVFs and get a surrogate to carry the child, but the child is still their child. DNA wise, if you check that child's DNA, it is the woman's DNA that's going to be there. That is the, the person that, that they use her egg for it. It's her DNA that's going to be there. My dear sisters, this one confused me. I, I no go lie to you. It confused me for for a long time. I was dumbfounded. I was like, what are you people saying? You sell your egg, you don't know who you're selling it to. You don't even know why they, are, they, are, they need that egg. Nothing. You just sell it and be going. Then in the future, when you get married and have your own kids, those kids grow up. And then, likelihood of them meeting each other and getting married to each other is increasing. It's increasing. Of course, you don't know the future. You don't know where you're going to land in the future. You don't know. You don't even know the child. You don't even know that child that you donated. So you don't even know if that child is someone that your child is going to meet in the future and fall in love with. You don't know. Let's even forget falling in love. And let's even forget, you know, killing each other, right? They might meet each other in the future and just not like each other and become a arch nemesis and just be doing things that can destroy each other's lives. You don't know. Meanwhile, they are siblings. Someone I even came to tell me, educate yourself. You are even in, you are even abroad. abroad. How did the person even put his head? Almost like trying to tell me that, oh, me that I'm abroad, how come I don't know that um, this thing is normal? Like, people do it abroad. I'm like, now you go tell me about a, a sperm and egg donation. Now you, now you want, now you want to teach me. Who do you think you are? Now you want, want to teach me 
And people saying, oh, this thing is not new, it's been done abroad. There are so many limitations to this thing. Even abroad, it is still a problem. They are still struggling with it. Go and watch um, the two documentary they had on. In fact, they have two. One is uh, something about my father. Is this sins of my father or something like that? A man, a doctor that was purposely impregnating women in his fertility clinic with his own sperm. Even when they come with their husband's sperm, he would discard their husband's sperm and put his own and, and fertilize the women, right? And these women will, will give birth to his children. So I don't even know how it's happened in the future. Somebody, one of the children did DNA tests and now found out that I believe all this ancestry DNA stuff. Now found out that she had so many siblings. That was how the thing blew up. And they now found out that the guy had over 100 kids, right? Then there's another one that's like that, that the title is The Man with the Thousand Kids or something. This man was just going up and down, donating his sperm up and down everywhere. And it's something that is not, mind you, it's not limited to just the guy. You know, there was a network of people who do these things. They do it in even in Africa. They go to places like Kenya. They said there was a big market for it in Kenya. And most of them, the ones that do it in America or in all those, not, it wasn't America, I think it was Netherlands or so. Or New Zealand, one of those countries. The guy was doing it to propagate the white uh, uh, race, okay, basically. Because they say the guy is blonde-haired, blue-eyed, basically a quintessential white specimen, okay. <laughs> so, this guy was doing it to, to propagate the white race. He had kids everywhere. It got so bad in New Zealand that they had to even put a law that you cannot donate more than 25 times in New Zealand because they now found out that some people had gone over and beyond and they now had so many kids in just that small New Zealand. These are the ones that they caught too. Mind you, these are the ones that they caught. These are the ones that, oh, were eventually found out. You don't know how bad it is, right? So that something is being done abroad does not make it right or does not make it uh, 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 what is the name without problems these things are problems that these people abroad are trying to mitigate but they're not allowed in it because they don't want to to uh, implicate themselves to start with but these problems already exist in africa let's not go and start the one because you know our own we're very good at copying rubbish all the things that work in new zealand will not go copy them all the things that work in america will not go copy them all the things that work in all these countries will not go copy them but it's that rubbish that doesn't work that they're even trying to find a way to to stop that's the one we'll carry on our head and start and start doing and start copying because because we like rubbish too much the only reason why egg donation has not really caused any major issues yet is that most times women are the ones looking for sperm to fertilize their own eggs okay it's usually not um you, there are not so many cases of women looking for i mean there are cases of it too, but it's not as much as the other one of women looking for sperm to fertilize their own eggs right in cases where they even look for um eggs there are few and there, there are fewer and unlike sperm that is how many million cells and you can just donate it anyhow for women it's not that easy you have to go through a medical procedure for them to be able to extract those eggs from your ovaries right but for men two minutes they don't bust okay two minutes they, they 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 get they have the material they need right for women it's not that straightforward that's part of why i feel like it doesn't become that much of a big deal it doesn't even mean that it's not going to become much of a big deal in the future but for right now i feel like part of why it's not that bad yet is because of the limitations with doing these things right and also Many women don't know that you have to be sure of your... Although they say they do the test, right? They do tests on, on those women to be sure that these women are good enough candidates for them to do the egg extractions from, right? However, in a place like Nigeria and in a case where you're doing it through backyard or just anyhow, you don't know. They might not even do those tests on you. You don't even know the result of those tests. They might just need what they want from you and they collect what they want from you and let you go and deal with your implications in the future. Right? So that's why I was like, you people, you people, you people trust your doctors too much. Oh. I research everything. I remember even when I was going through infertility, I would go to the hospital. When the doctor is talking to me like this, because it's the way the doctors, um, 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 what's the name, computer used to face. I could see, sometimes I could see the screen of the computer somehow, right? If I see something he writes on my notes, hmm, I might see a word. I was talking to me, oh. I'm cramming that word in my head, cramming that word in my head. The moment I leave his office, I'm going to Google it. I'm going to Google it. When doctor says, oh, we think you have this, 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 I run home and go and Google it. 
they will give me medication. No matter the medication they give me, whether they give me or they give my kids, the first thing I do is before I open it and give my child, I go and Google it and go and see what that medication is for before I give my child. I don't just carry anything and just do. I know that maybe I have some privilege that, that, that is actually informing my decision. So maybe I'm speaking from a, a place of privilege, which, I mean, I thank God for. However, it doesn't mean that we should not speak up about these things because... Obviously, ignorance is on rampage. Nigerians or people, not just Nigerians, because this thing is not even just a Nigerian thing. A lot of people are very, very ignorant and they don't care to know. Because I even feel like some people know that these things are actually their children. But because of their immediate um, what is the name, need or want, because it's not always need, sometimes it's just want. Because of their immediate need and want, they choose to pretend like they don't know. And please, I am not against egg donation in general, okay? It is not something I will personally do. I will personally not donate my eggs. If I wasn't able to have my own kids biologically, I would have just gone and adopted, right? Because I don't know why I would use someone else's egg and my husband's sperm. I'm sorry, I don't love you like that. I don't love you like that. Like, is that we don't have any biological investment in that child? <laughs> or we both have? I know they do that one. People that do it, kudos to you. But me, I cannot. I wouldn't have done it personally. But I understand why people do it. I totally get it. Okay? And I, and I don't fault those people for doing it. I just feel like when we are doing things like that, we need to be very, very mindful of the implications if let's say now let's say i was someone that considered it one of those things i'll do is i will not do anonymous right and i would also inform that child once that child gets to reproductive age i'll inform that child now now person egg you know you know be my ego i don't know who your biological um siblings might be so you have to be careful when you meet people with how you just jump into the sacks with them you find your person that you want to marry and then we do the proper testing do dna testing or we try and find your biological mother and find out if she has other kids okay that's what i would do personally if i were to consider it but because i don't even have energy for all these kind of things i would not consider it right and even with adoption i don't believe in I wouldn't do anonymous adoption either. Like, maybe the person might not know that I adopted their child, right? But I would know who the person is, right? I will know who the person is, where the person is from, all those things, right? But I don't need the person to know that I adopted their child, right? And I will also tell my child that you are actually adopted. So once you get to that age where, oh, you're not, you're not you know, active, you're not liking somebody, and all and all that i'll tell you first thing you need to do is to make sure that this person is not related to you in any way before you go ahead and that's why you have to preach abstinence okay like you need to be abstinent until the abstinent you have to be abstinent you have to abstain until we are sure that this person is not your biological relative okay Mama, this thing on my head is too tight ah i beg i beg i beg Yeesh. giving me headache so I got this palette from Amazon. One day that it was shaking me. I said, ah, I must do color, colorful look. I went and bought it since then. And this is like months ago. I've never used it. But see the colors. Let me bring it back a bit. Okay, so I'm done with my eye look. Hmm, I look pretty. <laughs> I don't need anybody to tell me, I know. Yeah, I want pink lips. My blush has kind of disappeared, but I think I like it the way it is. It's not too much. Mm, I don't need it more than this, actually. I need pink lips. Or is it going to be too much? Because my eyes are pink, but I want pink. I just want pink today. Again, I'm not saying that every single egg that has ever been donated was, you know, grown or turned into a child. I'm not saying that. But that is a potential child you have out there in the world. That's my point, right? Even if it's um the mother that is the person who got the egg, right? Even if the mother is the one that carried the baby, gave birth to the baby, and stayed with the baby till the baby was 25, okay? If they take that child's or that person's DNA and test it, is going to be linked back to you because you are the biological mother of that child 
let me go and get ready. I need to wear my jewelry and change my top and I'll be back to film my wig video. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye guys.